And now tonight, we're talking to a woman who's made a name for herself in the fashion industry. Now, she's worked with some of the biggest names in the business, like Jay-Z and Lauryn Hill, just to name a few. And now she's written a book to keep us all on our fashion toes. We're here talking about fashion faux pas that we need to know right now. Please welcome celebrity stylist and influencer, Tamika Foster Raymond to the show. <laughs> Well, you always look so fly, so you're in the right field. Thank you. Thanks for I joining me. It. Thanks yes. for having me. How you been? You been good? I've been great. So really busy. You got this book that you wrote. Exactly. White bras. That book is a um, kind of a passion project. Mm -hmm. um, throughout my styling career, I've seen so many egregious things you can I'm, only imagine. Yes. And not just with clients, per se. Uh, on the street, everywhere I go. <laughs> Airports. Yes. Everything. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Yes. Oh, Walmart. Any, oh, man. Walmart with a K. Oh, Walmart. yes. Walmart is crazy. Now, a lot of people yes. know you as the ex-wife of R&B singer Usher. Mm -hmm. But before you met him, you had a big career of your own, and you've been a really busy lady. Yes. And I, 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 I love that. I want you to be, you know, of course, recognized for what you do because it's so easy to just, you know, that's such and such as woman or ex-wife or girlfriend. Yeah. I feel like we're in a culture where it's like we're that's defined what you become by, known by the yeah. man we're, we're with or we dealt with. Yes. When you've had your own career, that's how you even met him in the first place. Correct. Correct. So tell us about your career you had before that. So, you know, obviously prior to being married, I was a fashion stylist. Mm -hmm. I worked with, you know, the likes of Patti LaBelle. She's still a client, actually. Wow. Um, I worked with Aretha Franklin and, you know, Jay-Z and Lauren Hill and so many others, um, Mary J. Belage, wow. Sierra. So I've had a huge career as a stylist. And then, of course, I met a client and we worked together and became best friends and got married. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how tough was it to step out from the shadows? Was it tough for you? Am I stepped out of it? That's the question. Right. <laughs> I don't know if I'm out of it. Um, but I, it's always a work in progress that, you know, I want people to know that, you know, prior to, you know, becoming a wife and, you know, I was into fashion. I went to school for fashion. Mm -hmm. I didn't uh, become a stylist after I was a stylist before. Isn't that frustrating that you can have this ridiculously long and, <laughs> and impressive resume, but because who you are, you know, you, you, you marry or you date, all that gets overshadowed. I have a friend that married a really successful former athlete. Yeah. And she said to me, and I'll never forget this, she said, Claudia, it's like I'm invisible now. Yeah. You become invisible. And nothing I did before him even matters to some people because they're tripping over her to get to him. To get to him. And yeah. it's like, hi, I'm, I'm here too. And, and that's got to be tough. Yeah, but you know, it doesn't affect me now. I, um, I have, I think, reestablished my life. Mm -hmm. I have, like, you know, different friends. And I don't really run in his circles so much. Mm -hmm. I try not to, at least. Um, yeah, so it, it hasn't been a problem. We're okay now. So outside of fashion, you have this book, and it's about style, faux pas, but you also talk about just faux pas in life in general. Well, because for me, style is more than just what you wear, mm -hmm. right? Style is the manner in which you do things, like how you move just as a person. Like you can walk into a restaurant, and you could be immaculately dressed, and you can have on all the fly fashions, but be uncouth is all get out. Yes. You know, loud and wrong, you know? Right, so right. that's your style as well. Um, it's kind of etiquette. It's kind of like, you know, the way that you just do things, the way you kind of flow through life is your style. I feel like reality TV has kind of messed that up a little bit in a way because you see these, there's a lot of pressure on reality TV, right, to uh, be in the best design, the best labels. But then you're still acting like trash in a lot of ways. Not everybody. I but mean, there I are, was on one, I know. Right, you know how it is. Right? <laughs> yeah. So you're, you're dressed in the finest things you can, you can afford or, right. or borrow. Or borrow. All right, okay, or borrow, let's be clear. Mm -hmm. and, and then acting like this. And I'm just like, yeah, it's a mixed yeah. message, I think. See, that's, well, that's where the style and fashion part. So a person that's in head-to-toe labels, you know, you've got Gucci this and Gucci that and, you know, Tom Ford this and whatever, that doesn't make you stylish. That makes you fashionable. That means you're into labels, you have a budget, you can buy it, you can borrow it, steal it, however you're getting it, <laughs> right? Um, but that doesn't mean you're stylish. Um, I think style is more creative, actually maybe mixing uh, different, um, different clothing lines, different designers, not always showing your logos or what you're wearing. Um, oftentimes, if you look at most things that I've ever worn or I even put on my clients, I don't do Gucci, 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 you know, whatever, whatever. I love Gucci and different designers or Louis Vuitton, but I try not to, like, overkill. 
I found that, and not to shade any particular city, but when I moved yeah. to Atlanta, I found that it was like very apparent that people wore labels. And they want you to know. They, they want you to see their money. You know, some right. people really care <laughs> that you see it on their bodies. Like, make be known. You know, is um, that a cultural thing that we that we tend to do more as black people? Yeah. We do, sure. right? Because yeah, yeah. Those yeah, of us that yeah. make it, we're like, okay, I didn't just make it just to, for it to be a secret. Right, right. I need folks to know that this thing costs. You didn't make it just to push around for. <laughs> yeah, no, and, you. And then you see someone like a Bill Gates, yeah. right? That you don't see a label inside. No buckle, no belt buckles, no big fancy glasses, no big whatever. So it's probably best, I would think, you kind of mentioned, like mixing the highs and the lows. Absolutely. I think it shows more creativity. I think that you don't look like a mannequin. Um, it's easy to walk in a store. You got a credit card and you see everything on the mannequin and you say, hey, give me that. Well, you didn't think of that. Someone else, you know, mm -hmm. a, a set dresser did that or a window dresser. But um, you're more stylish if you can pick pieces of it and you put it together and then you give it your own, its own little thing, you know, you have your own panache to it, you know. What stores would you recommend to mix some of the, for like low end stuff, to mix with some of your high end stuff? I love Zara. Zara, honestly. okay, that's a good one. I'm a Zara fanatic. Mm -hmm. Love Zara. Hi. Are you wearing Zara right <laughs> I'm now? I'm wearing Zara. I love Zara. Um, but then I'll mix Zara with Alexander McQueen. Okay. Or, you know, or with Cassidy or, you know, some other designers. I think you can mix it up. You don't have to spend a million dollars to look good. And I think that's probably a better way to keep it more unique so you don't look like, like you said, like the man. You don't look like everybody else because if you have on the full outfit, Number one, I think it tells everybody exactly what you're wearing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, again, it's just not creative to me. That's just my personal. And how are you different then from anybody else if you just have on, just got right off the mannequin? You're a mannequin, babe. You're a mannequin. <laughs> what are some of your favorite designers? I know the last few years has been tough for us as African Americans because all these things that we had to boycott, right? Like I, I was just getting into like some of the Gucci pieces and I bought some great shoes and belts and then... Oh, we had a boycott I mean, you know, Gucci for a little bit. I feel, I'm like, right. we all start making blackface sweaters so I can go back I to wearing know, my belts? I know, I know. I really feel like that was just a huge, horrible oversight. I think that they're making so much merchandise and they're coming out with so many designs every season. Somebody just didn't even... It was very just thoughtless, you Do know. Do you think it was that? It felt like it seemed... It felt like it was, thought it was bit, intentional. It felt like a trend because Prada did it. Gucci did it. I think there were like three. H and M just went all out. With I think the whole. these designers run out of stuff to do. They are, they're spent. You got to come out with, you know, you're coming out with three collections a season. You know, you got mm -hmm. resort and you know, you know, your fall and your spring, spring's ready. It's just a lot of, lot of clothes to come up with, and then they'll, they'll think it's an art. They'll see a picture and be like, oh, that's dope. Let's put it on there. Not even thinking of the history. The come on, that's maestro. Like, come on, you right. got us in blackface. And then I saw Young Thug wear the sweater. Yeah, I mean, because I don't think, he wasn't thinking. He's not yeah. thinking. These people are thinking of the designer. How much was it? Right. Like, oh, I spent 3000 on this, so it's cool. Right. You don't realize you just wore, like, something that's, like, oh, an ode to the slave trade. Like, right. thanks. <laughs> Yeah, it seemed so. like that. It, it kind of like that was in for a minute, and, and it, I, I, I'm like, are we getting played? Uh, yeah, maybe a little bit. A, a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. So let's talk about your book. Your book, White Bras. Yes. So what was the inspiration? And tell us about your book. Okay. So White Bras. It's just a no-no. It's like one of the biggest fashion no-nos. Really? A they white bra? They don't go with anything. They don't go with anything. Think about a white bra. Okay. There's not much you can wear one. If you put it under a white shirt. You see it. You see it. And it's an outline, like a, a hologram right, <laughs> under right. your shirt. And you want really something either nude or black under white. If you're wearing like lace or something sheer, you want to still stay as neutral as possible. Because the goal is to just make it all you know, kind of seamless. Mm -hmm. And you don't want it to stand out. So white bras are um, tacky to you. Yeah, there, there we are. Unless, them. what about bridal? How about on your wedding night? And guess what? On your wedding night, that's you're supposed to leave it in the hotel <laughs> after you're done. <laughs> but no, yeah, wedding day, I, I said in the book, after your wedding day, it's probably time to let it go. Okay. Um, and of course, every rule, the, the joke, I mean, the book is really like a big bunch of jokes. It's really funny. It's a funny take on all kinds of egregious fashion things that happen. I talk about hairlines and, and wigs and weaves. Can we get into hairlines real quick? Oh, God, we talk about it. <laughs> so I love, all the and... I love all the advances we made with hair, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that really need it. Like, <laughs> edges are gone, whatever, you know? But now we have men oh. that are getting glue on their heads. Oh, yeah. And then they're getting fake waves put on. Are we wrong as women to criticize them when we've been doing the whole weave thing? We're just mad at them, though. You cannot... 
glue these curly fries down <laughs> and just shave them and make a fade. That's not right. What about the fake beards now, too? Oh, I'm mad at all the Beijing hairline situation, the shoe polish scalps. Um, the scalpy, the, 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 the Sharpie shape up, I call it. The Sharpie shape up. Mm -hmm. I, I talk about Sharpies for brows. I was like, hey, I'm gonna go with God on this. I think they should be made out of hair. You yeah, know, yeah. like I, I talk, but the book is funny. It's, it's, my, it's my very opinionated way of just stabbing at all kinds of funny things that happen. Let's get through a few of them. I love Uggs, but are they, uh, wait, I love, but they are a, a bit illegal on men. What do you think yeah, about men? I don't want a man to have one. Uh. Any men with Uggs in the audience? I mean, you know what, if you wear them as house slippers or if you're literally in Aspen and you're walking around your cabin, there's little rules where you can get away with it, you know? I saw something earlier about the man with the uh, gyno, uh, what, what do we call it again? Comastia. The man with boobs, okay? Men with boobs. Okay. So if a man has a tite, he should not wear not a tite. A tite. A tight shirt, a tight t-shirt. He should stay away from soy. Soy products, right. Stay away from soy. Starbucks. And buy a looser shirt. A you know, because here's the thing. Not everybody has a perfect body. Right. Not everybody this is not to judge people that have these things. This is like, hey, there's a way to look better doing this. It's not saying, oh, you should be slim and you have to be this body. Because a lot of those faux pas are about things I've done myself. Okay, so oh, like, I break the law often. What's the worst one you did? Ooh, that I've done? Mm -hmm. Oh man, bad weaves. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I've done it. I've worn things that are too tight when I know I shouldn't have had it on. But a lot of times, like, I, I'm in my you 40s. You just want to squeeze. You're like, I'm going to try. I can do but it. But in your mind, time. you're still 5'6. Yeah, that's what I think. The body's yeah. like, no. Nah, and you think you're 16. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, and your body's like, no, no, ma'am, you have a little roll. You have a, you know. Right, you got a foo pa. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, no, no. That's what the cards are for. That's so, okay. okay, you you're a stylist, so you see a lot of things on the red carpet. So, what are the biggest like fashion faux pas you see in the carpet? I'm really, you know, here's the thing. Even in my biggest heyday of styling, I I never was a trend follower, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I really uh, prefer classic things that are kind of timeless that mm -hmm. go from season to season. So that way. You'll look at a picture of Lauryn Hill from the Miss Education album, a great example, or something that Usher may have worn, mm -hmm. and you look at an album cover from 10 years ago, and you won't say, oh my God, he looks like a clown. You'll just say, oh, that looks cool, mm -hmm. and it looks kind of timeless. And I think when you stay away from trends, you don't um, fall into looking dated right, <laughs> so right, fast. Right. It keeps it classic. Think of our guy, James Dean. You look at James Dean pictures. He's got on classic Levi's, black motorcycle jacket, white t-shirt, and that's a classic James Dean look. And if you see it today, that could be anyone. Any, any, you know, I think Elvis copied it. I think yeah. a lot of people did it. So classic works, and it's uh, kind of a no-brainer. And I think financially it's probably the best way to go too because like, uh, if you spend all this money on these, these trendy things that are out by they, next season. Well, first of all, with the, the social media world, you can only shoot it once and <laughs> now you've worn your whole Gucci outfit and you've blown your $5,000 and what are you gonna do with it? Isn't it crazy like the average Time person, for real, real. Like, right, uh, yeah. Do? Right, right. So, okay, I wanna touch on yeah. that as well because there's a lot of apps now yes. where you can sell your pieces you've worn that gently, you know, worn, gently used. And that's like kind of like a great place where you can. It's, I'm it's a hoarder. It's hard for me. I just you keep can't it get all. rid of your stuff. I, well, I mean, if it's something that is very distinctive, that's what I'm saying. If I do fall into the trap of um, buying something really trendy, and I buy like a Gucci sweater with all the G's, and I go to some award show, and I'm like, okay, now when am I going to wear this again? Never. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so those things have to go. But I try to buy things that are really seasoned that they can jump. Everything I have, I've worn it two or three or four or five seasons. I was gonna ask you, is it a faux pas for a celebrity to be seen in the same outfit twice? Because I saw something today on social media where Nene Leakes and Annie Cohen, she was kind of like that having an issue with That was kind of mean, that was mean. So he said something, he had a split screen of her wearing the same red dress with the spaghetti strap, I, right? I saw that and I saw her, I saw her response. And I thought that was a little mean. Um, of Andy? Yeah, it was a little mean, it was a, it was a, it was a dig. But here's my thing. Nene wears really nice clothing, like right. expensive. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you spend $3,000 on a dress. I'll be damned if I wear it in a confessional. You know, confessional is nothing. Mm -hmm. Half the time in confessionals, we'd have something else on the bottom right. or something on the top. So if she wore it in a confessional, she can wear the dress again. Now, I personally wouldn't have worn it to another Housewives-related event, you see. Got it. If I wore it in a confessional, then I'm going to wear it to another red carpet, something not related. 
That makes sense. So two and housewives things, people are going to make that comparison. Run. But it was kind of catty. And for people who don't know, Nene wore the same dress, I think, in a confessional and then... Uh, Listen, I made a jacket for her. She wore it a lot, and I was happy. Um, you know, the Colt du jour, the um, military-style mm -hmm, jackets mm -hmm. with the patches? I created that jacket. She wore it on her comedy show. I think she got, like, in Oakland, she got booed and had problems there. But she wore it a lot of other times. You bought it. You should be able to wear your clothes as many times as you want.